the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into, and they are safe. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into, and they are safe. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into, and they are safe. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into, and they are safe. Oh yes, that is Proverbs 18, verse 10. 18, verse 10. Run in to the name of Jesus, and you will be safe. I welcome each and every one of you to the reading of the Word of God this morning. It's January 14, and you could be getting ready Genesis, Bereshit, chapter 30. That is where we will begin with verse 1. And right before we begin, let me explain my red face. It was called a dermatology appointment. It was called a light treatment, and I feel like they burned up my eyeballs and my whole face. Now, you want to call that healing? I don't. Sorry. So, <clears throat> it was a very sleepless night, a lot of pain. Uh, convinces me all the more to run into that safe tower named Jesus. All the more to call the body of Christ to the word of God and to believe that when he cried, it is finished from the cross, that's exactly what he meant. And I will trust the Lord with my skin from here on, period. Well, now that we've had that little rant, let's get back down to the love of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the one that gives it. And we will continue here reading about Rachel and Jacob and this whole family and all that happened. Oh, my goodness. Many traumatic things, okay? And I'm sure there are a lot of things the Holy Ghost would stir us and help us to understand, to receive revelation, and maybe even things that would help us in our own lives and our own situations, right? So, y'all... Open up your ears, get your eyes on the Word of God, and let's see what the Holy Spirit has for us this morning. Holy Spirit, we are depending on you, and you are dependable, to give the revelation today of this wonderful Word. It's your Word. You were there. You were there when the Lord brought it all about, and we are rejoicing that we have it in our hands. I am rejoicing. Now, when Rachel saw that she bore Jacob no children, Rachel envied her sister and said to Jacob, Give me children or else I die. Wow. And Jacob's anger was aroused against Rachel. And he said, Am I in the place of God? Who has withheld from you the fruit of the womb? So we have a bad family blow up here, don't we? So she said, get ready. Here is my maid, Bilhah. Go in to her, and she will bear a child on my knees, that I also may have children by her. And then she gave him Bilhah, her maid, as wife. And Jacob went in to her. And Bilhah conceived and bore Jacob a son. And then Rachel said, God has judged my case. And he has also heard my voice and given me a son. 
Therefore, she called his name Dan. And we have, we have all of these sons that became the heads of the tribes of Israel. And Rachel's maid Bilhah conceived again and bore Jacob a second son. And then Rachel said, with great wrestlings, I have wrestled with my sister, and indeed I have prevailed. So she called his name Nephtali. And we are reading what all these names. I'm glad you showed up this morning, Scott. <laughs> so I have a tough time here <laughs> with how all these sons were born. When Leah saw that she had stopped bearing, she took Zilpah, her maid, and gave her to Jacob as wife. And Leah's maid, Zilpah, bore Jacob a son. And then Leah said, a troop comes. So she called his name Gad. And Leah's maid, Zilpah, bore Jacob a second son. And then Leah said, I am happy for the daughters will call me blessed. So she called his name Asher. Now Reuben went in the days of wheat harvest and found mandrakes in the field and brought them to his mother Leah. And then Rachel said to Leah, please give me some of your son's mandrakes. But she said to her, is it a small matter that you've taken away my husband? Would you take away my son's mandrakes also? And Rachel said, Therefore, he will lie with you tonight for your son's mandrakes. And when Jacob came out of the field in the evening, Leah went out to meet him and said, You must come in to me, for I have surely hired you with my son's mandrakes. And he lay with her that night. And God listened to Leah. And she conceived and bore Jacob a fifth son. So, that's what the Lord had to say about it. We will be happy with the word of God. And Leah said, God has given me my wages because I have given my maid to my husband. So she called his name Issachar. And then Leah conceived again and bore Jacob a sixth son. And Leah said, God has endowed me with a good endowment. Now my husband will dwell with me because I have borne him six sons. So she called his name Zebulun. And afterward she bore a daughter and called her name Dinah. Uh, maybe it's Dina. We would say Dina. And then God remembered Rachel and God listened to her and opened her womb. And she conceived and bore a son and said, God has taken away my reproach. So she called his name Joseph and said, The Lord shall add to me another son. And it came to pass, when Rachel had born Joseph, that Jacob said to Laban, Send me away, that I may go to my own place and to my country. Give me my wives and my children, for whom I have served you, and let me go, for you know my service which I have done for you. And Laban said to him, Please stay. If I have found favor in your eyes, for I have learned by experience that the Lord has blessed me for your sake. And then he said, Name me your wages, and I will give it. So Jacob said to him, You know how I have served you, and how your livestock have been with me, for what you had before I came was little, and it has increased to a great amount. The Lord has blessed you since my coming. And now, when shall I also provide for my own house? 
So he said, What shall I give you? And Jacob said, You shall give you shall not give me anything. If you will do this thing for me, I will again feed and keep your flocks. Let me pass through all your flock today, removing from there all the speckled and spotted sheep and all the brown ones among the lambs and the spotted and speckled among the goats. And these shall be my wages. So my righteousness will answer for me in time to come. When the subject of my wages comes before you, every one that is not speckled and spotted among the goats and brown among the lambs will be considered stolen if it is with me. And Laban said, Oh, that it were according to your word, so he removed that day the male goats that were speckled and spotted, all the female goats that were speckled and spotted, every one that had some white in it, and all the brown ones from among the lambs, and gave them into the hand of his sons. And then he put three days' journey between himself and Jacob, and Jacob fed the rest of Laban's flocks. Now Jacob took for himself rods of green poplar and of the almond and chestnut trees, peeled white strips in them and exposed the white which was in the rods. I hope you comment on all of this, Scott. <laughs> we, we, could, we could go for some revelation. And the rods which he had peeled, he set before the flocks in the gutters, in the watering troughs where the flocks came to drink, so that they should conceive when they came to drink. So the flocks conceived before the rods, and the flocks brought forth streaked, speckled, and spotted. <clears throat> and then Jacob separated the lambs and made the flocks face toward the street and all the brown in the flock of Laban. But he put his own flocks by themselves and did not put them with Laban's flock. And it came to pass, <coughs> whenever the stronger livestock conceived, that Jacob placed the rods before the eyes of the livestock in the gutters. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> that they might conceive among the rods. But when the flocks were feeble, he did not put them in. Quite a plan here. <clears throat> so the feebler were Laban's, and the strongers were Jacob's. Thus the man became exceedingly prosperous and had large flocks, female and male servants, and camels and donkeys. <clears throat> and now we move along to chapter 31. <clears throat> Believing that Jane can read. <clears throat> now Jacob heard the words of Laban's sons, saying, Jacob has taken away all that was our father's. And from what was our father's, he has acquired all this wealth. <clears throat> and Jacob saw the countenance of Laban, and indeed it was not favorable toward him as before. And then the Lord said to Jacob, Return to the land of your fathers and to your family, and I will be with you. So Jacob sent and called Rachel and Leah to the field, to his flock, and said to them, I see your father's countenance that is not favorable toward me as before, but the God of my father has been with me. And you know that with all my might, I have served your father. Yet your father has deceived me 
and changed my wages ten times. But God did not allow him to hurt me. If he said thus, the speckled shall be your wages, then all the flocks bore speckled. And if he said thus, the streaked shall be your wages, then all the flocks bore streaked. So God has taken away the livestock of your father and given them to me. And it happened at the time when the flocks conceived that I lifted my eyes and I saw in a dream and behold, the rams which leaped upon the flocks were streaked, speckled, and gray-spotted. And then the angel of God spoke to me in a dream, saying, Jacob, Jacob. And I said, Here I am. And he said, Lift your eyes now and see. All the rams which leap on the flocks are streaked, speckled, and gray-spotted. For I have seen all that Laban is doing to you. I am the God of Bethel, which means house of God, where you anointed the pillar and where you made a vow to me. Now arise, get out of this land and return to the land of your family. And then Rachel and Leah answered and said to him, is there still any portion or inheritance for us in our father's house? Are we not considered strangers by him? For he has sold us and also completely consumed our money. For all these riches which God has taken from our father are really ours and our children's. Now then, Whatever God has said to you, do it. Hallelujah. There you have it. Now, they've all discussed it, and they're going to pack up, aren't they? We shall find out tomorrow, the next day, Lord willing, that we're here. All right, y'all. <clears throat> Wasn't that something? Wow, I enjoyed that. All right, we're going to move along to Matthew, Matthew chapter 10, chapter 10, turning to the New Testament. And when Jesus, he had called his 12 disciples to him, he gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of diseases. Now the names of the 12 apostles are these. First, Simon, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Libius, whose surname was Thaddeus, Simon, or Simon, the Canaanite, and Judas Iscariot, who also betrayed him. <clears throat> These twelve Jesus sent out and commanded them, saying, Do not go into the way of the Gentiles, and do not enter a city of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you have received freely give. Provide neither gold nor silver nor copper in your money belts, nor bag for your journey, nor two tunics, nor sandals, nor staffs, for a worker is worthy of his food. Wow! 
have faith and believe for everything you need. In other words, right? Now, whatever city or town you enter, inquire who in it is worthy and stay there till you go out. And when you go into a household, greet it. If the household is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it's not worthy, let your peace return to you. And whoever will not receive you nor hear your words, when you depart from that house or city, shake off the dust from your feet. Assuredly, I say to you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. Wow. That's a real serious thing, isn't it? Behold, Jesus says, I send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. Therefore, be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. But beware of men, <clears throat> for they will deliver you up to councils and scourge you in their synagogues. You will be brought before governors and kings for my sake as a testimony to them and to the Gentiles. But when they deliver you up, do not worry about how or what you should speak, for it will be given to you in that hour what you should speak. For it is not you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father who speaks in you. Now brother will deliver up brother to death, and a father his child, and children will rise up against parents and cause them to be put to death, and you will be hated by all for my name's sake. But he who endures to the end will be saved. Did you hear that? He who endures to the end the end of your life, or the end till Jesus comes, which either happens first. He who endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in this city, flee to another. For assuredly, I say to you, you will not have gone through the cities of Israel before the Son of Man comes. Wow, wow, let us take in Jesus' words, Yeshua. <clears throat> we move right along now to Psalm 12, Psalm 12, another Psalm of David given to the chief musician who wrote music for an eight-stringed harp. Help, Lord, for the godly man ceases for the faithful disappear from among the sons of men. They speak idly, every one with his neighbor, with flattering lips and a double heart they speak. May the Lord cut off all flattering lips and the tongue that speaks proud things, who have said, with our tongue we will prevail. Our lips are our own. Who is Lord over us? Wow. Wow. That's some kind of people there, right? <clears throat> for the oppression of the poor, for the sighing of the needy, now I will arise, says the Lord. I will set him in the safety of for which he yearns. Oh, such love words from the Lord. The words of the Lord are pure words, like silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. 
You shall keep them, O Lord. You shall preserve them from this generation forever. The wicked prowl on every side. When vileness is exalted among the sons of men. Wow. I bet that music got real intense on that harp for those last terse words. Okay, how about that psalm, huh? We will wrap it all up today on the 14th of January with Proverbs chapter 3, verses 13 through 15. Proverbs chapter 3, 13 through 15. Connie's put it right down there for you. Happy is the man who finds wisdom and the man who gains understanding. That's the way to happiness. For her proceeds, whose proceeds? Hers. Who's her? Wisdom and understanding. For her proceeds are better than the profits of silver and her gain than fine gold. She is more precious than rubies, and all the things you may desire cannot compare with her, with wisdom, with understanding. Far exceeds silver gold that just slips through our hands so fast, doesn't it? Hallelujah to the Lamb. Well, what a wonderful portion of the Word of God. Thank you. Thank you, precious Father. Thank you, Lord. We, we pray to you, Lord, as a, as a whole group. And we come with thanksgiving. We bow our hearts and our spirits before you in gratefulness to have your Word. Oh, Lord, your Word is far richer than silver and gold. Your word renews us, renews our minds, renews our bodies, renews our strength. Wisdom, understanding, that, that's the way to happiness. And Lord, we find it in you, in your word. We seek you today, Lord Jesus. Precious Yeshua HaMashiach, we seek you and all your fullness. Please, Lord, please, Lord, speak with us. We put everything aside and give you our time and our attention. We give you our love, our adoration, our praise. And Lord, we'd ask <clears throat> that we would feel your presence that we would know with assurance that you are there and that your word is working in us, in our lives, that your word spoken by us will go out with anointing and touch others and bring them into your presence, just like people originally witnessed to us and brought us to desire you. Lord, we hold up Israel, your precious land, your precious people. We hold up <clears throat> your special city, Jerusalem. We hold her up, Lord, and we obey you and we pray today for her peace, that peace, your peace, that peace that passes all understanding, that peace would be there in Jerusalem, everywhere, from the Knesset, clear out to the desert, to the, the smallest hut. Be with every single person. Lord, be with all of your people who are longing to come home to Israel. They have a longing in their heart to leave where they have been and to come home. And Lord, we're watching you do it. It is so wonderful. We are watching you bring your people. And Gentiles are helping with that. Very much so. 
Lord, we'd ask that everyone who would give towards bringing your people home would be truly blessed by you and that that money would do exactly what it was sent for, that it would not be milked in any other way along the way, <clears throat> but it would go toward getting your people home. And we bless you for being able to live in this day, Lord Jesus, to see your hand doing these mighty prophecies that you had proclaimed generations ago. We are seeing so many come to pass today. And we are excited, Lord. We are excited to see you return. We are excited, Lord. Many are holding up specific prayers for friends and family. And Lord, once again today, I hold up my friends, Vicki and Cliff to you, who are suffering, suffering. And I'd ask, Lord, that your word, they are full of your word. Let your word arise within both of them and bring healing. Let them, when they call upon you, Lord, I'd ask, please, hear them and hear for all of the others being lifted up in prayer right now. We will give you all the praise in all the glory for you are the one who will heal, and you are the only one. Thank you, Lord Jesus, precious Yeshua, who endured the suffering for us, took the beating that ripped stripes, ribbons of your flesh down your back, who suffered, carried that cross when you could hardly walk, suffered on that cross, and then cried for us, it is finished. It is finished. We bless you. We thank you for that, Lord. We thank you for that. That, that is the whole foundation of life, what you have done for us. So, Lord, cause us to open up our hearts and truly receive all that you have done, that we might glorify you and praise you every moment of the day and night. Thank you, Lord, and all of God's people. Cried a hearty amen, went ahead with your prayers, and I ask that you are blessed today with his love. I love you. Bye-bye.